When you get to the point of installing a conductor in your organ, there's a lot of decisions you have to make well in advance of doing this. First of all, do you want a conductor? Are you going to build the organ to the exact dimensions shown in the plans? Just because I have mechanized the conductor and have him animated with servos does not mean that you can't still use the same conductor and drive it mechanically exactly as shown in John Smith's plans. Nothing has changed. My case is 14 and a quarter, his is 11 and a quarter, and he drives the conductor with wires and levers off of the crankshaft and off of this take-up spool drive wheel. And this conductor only slides in and out maybe, it seems like two inches, it's not very far. Some of the organs have been built and the conductor doesn't move at all. This conductor is exactly 100% the same size as what's shown in the plans. Exactly. So once you decide how you want to install this, or if you want to install it, in my case, I use these linear rails. You can find linear rails for $35, $40. Some of these rails cost hundreds of dollars each, and they're used in CNC machining. I bought these secondhand off of eBay. I paid $18.50 for two rails and four of the sliders and they were filthy. They were absolutely packed with old grease and swarf and I soaked them in kerosene and used WD-40 and loosened them up. They're a pretty neat little mechanism and allows this thing to move in and out so smoothly. Now as you start working on something like what I've done it becomes almost impossible to work around this thing and be able to get to all the wires and everything to get this thing to work. So I made this test stand or assembly jig or whatever you want to call it. There's a couple of criteria that have to be exactly the same between this and how it goes into the organ. The relationship of this rail has to be precisely the same as the front of the pressure box and the position of it and that's the end of what is going to be relative between this and the organ. As you go about making the transport mechanism or whatever it is you decide to build, then you will have to take this and transfer it back into the organ and make sure things clear. The conductor wants to be centered in the front of the case, but more than likely whatever you're sliding in and out will not mount centered in the case. And that's what happened with this. This linear rail is off-centered. And when I got through making the transport mechanism, I had to shift it over so that this guy was centered in the front of the case. Then you have clearance problems. This is the base of the reservoir and the top of the bellows. This is stationary. But when this retracts, this has to come back here. And when it stops, you have to clear this. You have to make sure that the bottom of this thing here will not touch this reservoir when it's expanded to its full point of inflation and you want to stay clear of this leather. There's always a chance that you'll forget and turn this organ on before you extend the conductor. You don't want this reservoir to be going up and down tearing up this leather. And I can tell you from experience it's very easy to lose track of what you're doing when you're working on the test stand and you forget what's going on inside the organ. So you have to keep checking. And as you progress and start doing things like this mechanism for running the platform in and out, you got your micro switches, everything has the potential of getting in the way. And you can see how close this blue wire is to this thing. Make everything as neat as possible so they don't interfere later on when you're trying to run the hoses. And you don't want anything rubbing as this goes in and out of the case. After these pipes were installed in the front and the base pipes installed in the rear, and I decided to make this box to keep hoses and stuff from interfering with this mechanism as it went in and out of the organ so there wouldn't be any rubbing or entanglements. This was on eBay listed as a CNC linear rail or linear slide. These sliders or trucks, they have a bunch of recirculating balls in here. and they engage and run on this V-slot. Very smooth. There's two of these rails and four of these trucks or sliders. 
and I got all six pieces for about $18.50. When I was looking for a way to mount the conductor and get him to move smoothly in and out of the organ, this is the way I decided to go. There's so many other ways you could do it, and if the conductor is only going to slide in and out a couple of inches like John Smith's, use a wood slide like what he did. Another change to this organ, and a, quite a large change, is the motor drive and rewind. The motor and the conductor work off of 12 volts. I have not included a fuse in the organ case. My fuse is in the battery box, and currently it's a 10 amp fuse. One additional word of caution, I use Baltic birch plywood throughout this organ, and these sides are made out of quarter inch Baltic birch. Quarter inch is fairly flat, but it does have a little bit of bow to it. I made the original sides for this organ several years ago when I built the first organ. When it came time to assemble this, I had never noticed how badly they had become warped, and they were sitting flat in storage, so I ended up having to make new sides for this organ. Even with these new sides, nothing here is exactly square until everything is installed and screwed down tight. So you need to check that as you go along with your assembly.